Welcome back everyone. In this week's video, I'm going to go over three-point lighting. You've probably heard of this before, but didn't really know uh, what it was. I first heard of it about 10 years ago in the context of video lighting. And of course, since light is light, it will not really make a difference whether or not you learn this fundamental concept for photo or for video. So three-point lighting is when you have three points of light. And you can see I've got three softboxes here in this shot. So the very first point of light is our main light. And I always want my main light to equal, when metered with a light meter, uh, the same exposure that I have my camera set to. So this is my Sekonic L478-DR-U-EL. I think that's what it's called. And it allows me to communicate with my Ellen Chrome lights. So that'll be important in a second because you'll see me adjust the power. So I want to take my light meter and I want to meter this light only. It's in group one and I want to see how bright it is. So my goal is to have it meter at F8. So right now it meters at 5.6 and a few tenths. So I'm going to change the light just a little bit here and that's going to get me where I need to be and I'll re-meter. And now it meters at F8. So that's exactly what I needed. Now, I want my second point of light. That's my fill light. That's what this large octobox is over here on your right. And I'm going to go ahead and meter that. I want it to meter three stops down from the subject's face. This is what is known as a one to four ratio. And I feel like this is a good amount of contrast. Now, sometimes people, um, Actually, that might be a one to eight ratio, but I want that light to be three stops down because that creates a fair amount of contrast. If you bring it up so that it meters at 5.6, it's going to look very flat. The lighting will look very flat. And if you brought it to F4, it would look less fat, flat, but at 2.8, I think it's gonna look really good. So let me meter to make sure that we get 2.8. And again, when you're using a light meter, you want to place it right in front of your subject. Jordan is helping us out today because your meter, your meter readings will only be accurate at that distance. If you're metering the light like over here for that light, it's not going to be as accurate as if you meter it right here. So um, we need it to be at 2.8. I just need to make a few adjustments here. All right, and it's at 2.8. I'll just meter to confirm. Okay, great. Now, our third point of light is our kicker or our edge light, and that's this large uh, strip softbox over here. And I usually want that light to meter two stops down from uh, the main light. So let's go ahead and check that out. I'm gonna go ahead and meter it back here. All right, so if that's at F8, two stops down would be F8, five, six, and then F4. So I want this light to meter at F4. And right now it's metering at F4 in a few tenths. So I'll just make a few adjustments and re-meter. Okay, great. And now it meters at F4. So let's go ahead and take a picture so you guys can see what this looks like. And I'll even fire one light at a time so you can see what each light is doing. Okay, so here are all the lights together. And then I'm gonna go ahead and fire each light for you so you can see what each light is doing. So, here is our main light. Here is the fill. Here is the edge light. And then here are all of the lights together. And that's it, it's really that simple. And that is all we need to know to do three-point lighting. Now remember earlier I said I was gonna have a bit of a surprise for you. It's actually gonna be a fourth point. We're gonna go over four-point lighting. So what can we add to this scene? I think the best thing that we could add right now is a hair light. A fourth point could be the background light, but really that wouldn't be so interesting. Let's do something a little cooler. So I'm gonna add a 35 by 90 centimeter Ellen Chrome strip softbox. It's roughly one by three feet. And I'm going to boom it out there over the set on my Avenger 600D boom that's attached to my Studio Titan crank stand. 
Okay, great. I'm sure you can probably barely see me right now as I'm in this forest of softboxes, but I've got the one by three strip here lined up so that it's a little bit behind him and pointed down at about 45 degrees. And this part is overhanging his body. And that's really important because I want to light him from this general uh, direction. Now, I normally would have it be where, I, I normally would have my hair light be about one stop down from my main light when I'm photographing a person with dark hair. I would probably have it two stops down for a person with brown hair. And then I would have it about three stops down for a person with blonde hair. And all of these measurements that I'm giving you today for this light and all of the lights are really just sort of a general guide and a starting point. You should always take test frames and then adjust the lights to taste so that you're happy with it. So let me go ahead and meter this. I'm gonna meter it so it's one stop down. That would be at 5.6 because his face is at F8. So let me go ahead and, and get into group four here and I'll just meter. And then I just need to turn it up a little bit so that it meters 5.6. Oh, I meant down a little bit, so it meters at 5.6. Okay, perfect. Let's go ahead and take a test frame, and we'll look at it with and without the hair light. So before we move on, I just wanted to tell you that I just came out with a lighting handbook, and in this digital download, I go over how to recreate 20 different lighting setups. And in there, I've got behind the scenes photos, diagrams, I let you know what uh, modifiers I was using, the distances in general terms, and more importantly, the light meter reading for each light and how to put everything together. So if you're interested in that, please go to johngress.com slash lighting handbooks. Okay, so. All right, so that's everything with the hair light included. And here is the hair light alone. Now you can see what that's doing. And now as you can see here in the side by side, by adding the hair light, it really pops him off of the background. And we've preserved a fair amount of detail here in his hair. And it looks much better with the hair light added um, than without it. And now you've learned three point lighting and four point lighting all in the same video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe, have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon.